I am Tolska. Hello, Tolska. Hello. Welcome. Anyway, she's like. A Hello boss. again. I have come a long Hello. way to talk to you. Talk to you. Elijah was speaking about missions earlier, and I have a mission here as well. My mission is not the same as his, but it is almost as important, or equally important in many ways. I am coming to let humans know that aliens can be helpful. Aliens are part of your future. Aliens are part of who you are, as you also know. I am here to let you know that information about how to live a greater life can be received from aliens, but not too far in advance that you would harm yourselves with the information. Tesla will be with me when I travel and he has greater information for the world. Information that's been suppressed by the governments and suppressed by those that would not want people to have free energy or uh, know about the things that could help them in their daily lives that are actually simply simple things but are very available to them. My goal is to talk to you in a very calm way, but to let you know that there is many things that are happening, not only on your world, but outside your world. Please welcome me when I come. It is not yet my time to travel, but I will be traveling when God says it is the right time. Much love to you all. And I will bring someone else in now. I will only want to just talk for a few moments. But, but if there is any questions, I will take them now. Does anyone in the room have any questions? I have a question. Okay. Yes. Um, hello and welcome. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I don't believe I've, I know anything about you. So, so can you tell us a little bit on what your role is on, on this? Um, how are you connected? The Pleiadians from Maya have a great responsibility with the ascension here on earth. And I am from Maya. I was a prince there and I left my home to come to be, to be here with you so that I can help with your ascension processes and to bring some information that may be needed to your people. There are many of my people from my planet now born into this society to help with the ascension process. However, not all of them are kings and queens, but many of them are very important and will help me to hold the energy on this planet. For this planet's timelines must stay intact. And at, as of recently, they have been shifting quite a lot. And this is something that concerns us. However, right now we are just preparing for our mission on this planet. Many things are happening and many things must happen before we are able to complete our mission. But I will let you know that we are from the Mayan planet Maya. And my name is Tolska'a there, which is the royal pronunciation. And I am only Tolska here because I am not royal away from my planet. But we are here to bring you information, understanding, confirmations, and a better way of life. Okay. So um, in terms of that, in what particular topic 
can the ETs in this sense that you're speaking of, can they help humans? As I was saying, there is technology that you do not have that's being withheld from you by your governments that is easy for you to make yourself and will be helpful around the homes. And also unlimited energy that can be, that can have you with energy without having to pay electric bills and things of this nature. But we will be coming at a later time. The time is not quite right for us to bring this information to you. Okay, so you will be bringing it directly to the people. Yes. And that would be after first contact? No. Oh, okay, but it will be, okay. It will be the way it must be, and you will see when it happens. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Sheer has a question. Hello, Tosca. Yes. Where to speak with you this way? I usually speak with David a lot. Yes. Uh, first of all, you said a prince. I'm pretty sure you are a king. Since my father has died, I am now going to be king when I return. But when I left, I was still a prince. I see. Um, I actually had a dream a while back that I do remember that I told David... Uh, it was during the sunset, and it's like hearing a YouTube channeling of him channeling you, and there was a red triangle in the sky, and we didn't know what the meaning was it of it. Yes. Triangles are powerful. They are a universal symbol of power in many ways. The pyramids were born were born from the triangle as well, but put into dimensions that were equally as important. So the triangle represents the energy and the power that is the calm, and the red is the fire and passion of God. I see. And do you have any message for David or something? I think he's trying to get in, but for some reason he can't. It is all right. My messages are private with him. Okay. Well, it was very good to speak with you finally. It is good to speak to you as well. Much love. Don has a question. Don. Hello, Hello Tosca. This is Don. I would Great. like to know, is there anything that we can do together uh, to stabilize this timeline. This timeline is not stable, as you know. And with all the different energy bursts, solar flares and solar winds, galactic energies that are around, it will remain a little unstable. But with the prayers of humans, with the energies of humans to Gaia, it does help stabilize it some. But we do not see any potential catastrophe with the timelines at this point. But we just must keep them in order. Thank you. Okay, Leela has a question. Thank you. Uh, greetings. I have two questions. The last night I have a very powerful energetic dream, but sadly I forgot. <laughs> Could you access that energy and tell me more about it? I cannot access your dreams from here, but I know that the powerful dream was about your next life and not this one. That I can tell you. Yes, because it was Ganesh involved, so that I remember in some powerful healing and symbols, but I was like, it was like very powerful that I woke up. <laughs> Yes, so that, they did not want you to remember everything about it anyway. Makes, it is makes not sense. yet time for those symbols to be used. You will dream Absolutely. of them again when it is right. Right. Uh, the next question, El Elijah was some time ago told me I will be contact with uh, from Mayan culture to work in this life. Are you 
that person are you those people who are going to work with me in this life or i misunderstood maybe somebody else no. is we are the mayan we are the people from maya we are pleiadians it is from the pleiadian systems and so therefore if you are to work with us it will happen okay, okay. wonderful so thank you you're welcome Did anyone else have any other questions? Yes, this is Stephanie and Suzanne. I have a question, please. Yes. Okay. Hi, thanks for joining us this afternoon. Appreciate you coming to spend some time with us and share. Thank you. So my question is with regards to tomorrow's total eclipse, is there um, this apparently only happens, uh, well, it happens infrequently. I guess it was a hundred or more years ago when it happened last. What can you tell us is significant about this by way of the energies and how they might impact us? First of all, the eclipse is on Monday and tomorrow is Sunday, but Monday, I'm sorry. Thank you. <laughs> yes. The energies that are, that come from a solar eclipse are very interesting and different. They are used by mystics and people of magic all over the world. And since this is a time when magic has been rekindled since September of 2015, I believe, or 14, since that time, magic is growing stronger. So you will find that those that know about magic will be using this eclipse in their own ways for their own reasons some of them positive and some of them negative but the energies of the earth will change during this eclipse and there will be events uh that will happen because of it not only that but on september 23rd the alignments of planets is coming as well so the energy between the eclipse time and the time of the alignment will bring many disruptive energies, as you call them, but they do not have to be necessarily disruptive to everyone, but they will be disruptive in many ways to Mother Earth. So I will try to help calm those as well. But the alliance of planets that will be occurring on September 23rd has not happened for many, uh, a couple thousand years anyway. I am not sure Is of your history. I was not alive when it once happened before, but I am aware that it is a very rare incidence as well as this solar eclipse. The September 23rd date that you gave, is that um, when the Lionsgate portal around that time is supposed to close or has some impact on things? The Lion's Gate portal is something of, I cannot speak about it actually, but yes, it will be, there will be some, I'm not saying that it will close at that time, but it will be affected. Okay, thank you so much. Any Thank you. Uh, we have. Uh, if you want to have a question, please put a one in the chat, Angie or Stephanie. Um, also, uh, the next person is Marlene. Thank you. What was the name? Marlene. Marlene, welcome. Tolska, uh, I'm happy to be here. Um, yeah. There is a very important mission uh, concerning uh, pyramids that is happening now. Uh, on the planet, which I'm involved with. And yes. my first question, please, is what is my next step in regards to this project? Realizing where all the pyramids are, first of all. There's more pyramids than you may imagine. Some are buried and some uh, have been camouflaged in some way. Remember that the dimensions of the pyramids are very similar all over the world and so therefore especially the base 
the base of the pyramid is very similar everywhere. And so concentrate on that as your as one of the things to look at because it is important for future pyramid building which will happen on this planet so therefore your next step is to you have a great deal of understanding i'm perceiving that right now which pyramid is calling you well there are two First, uh, the period of, period of the sun. Uh, I feel there's much work to be done there. Uh, yes. any, guid any guidance you can give me, please? You are correct. The pyramid of the sun has some things that need reopened around it. There is vortexes. There's a stargate there as well. And yes. it is not, it's, uh, it's been in and out of repair for a while now. Yes. There are those that have repaired it, and it is now out of repair once again. And so your work will probably be to re once again repair the Stargate and uh, build the vortexes around it. Because, because the vortexes have gone low, the energy in them, the Stargate failed. So build the vortexes and then fix the Stargate Actually, there's not much to do with that. The vortexes are the most important part. The Stargate will start up again. There will be need some adjustments. Yes, um, I feel the vortexes are sp spinning in a <laughs> in not a proper manner. <laughs> correct. You must um, correct. Um, is that in part due to? a flock of humans that go there on a regular basis? It is not human energy that caused them to go bad, but it was reptilian energy from a while ago, not recent, that they came to try to stop it. So they tried to move the vortex in the opposite directions for purposes of their own. They, they weren't quite successful, but they did slow the vortexes down so they are not working properly so we need to reactivate them and uh, get the power back on and stabilize Correct. so that they're not there are three of them in that area that were affected yes thank you the other pyramid is the pyramid of um the pyramid of the moon and there's none of another one that is not yet uh, has not yet come out in uh, as being discovered Correct. Which is a smaller one. Uh, any information on those, please? Yes, they're in a place. I cannot tell you where they are because yes. I, as a alien, cannot lead you to discoveries. But I can tell you this it's in a place that no one will look, and mm -hmm. it is in the United States. I'm sorry, your last uh, words were? It is in the United States. In the, uni in the United States, okay. Yes, because no one will look for it there. Yeah, of course. I understand. Yeah. Um, my other question, if I may. Yes. How is your constellation related to this mission? And if so, how, please? My constellation? Well, I mean, I'm no. Not sure I'm if I understand I'm the question. The, I'm Pleiades, the, the Pleiades are related to this, my mission in the sense that we were given responsibility many eons ago for the ascension of this planet in some ways. Not complete control, but in some ways a greater control because of how we were to do it. We had the best idea of how to keep the flame burning. And so we were put in charge and we prayed to God that we uh, do a good job. Well, thank you so much for being with us, supporting us, sending us the the energy that's needed, um, especially when we're physically on the premises. Yes. Um, I will remember you. I will ask and call on you, if I may, and your peers. We are, we are many here, but some have not identified themselves as yet. Thank you very much for your answers. 
You're welcome. Thank you. Angie has a question now. Yes, Angie. Hello, Tosca. Nice Three. to meet with you. Yes. Um, I've been studying the mind calendar and I watched the energy waves. So you should be aware of the self existing, the white self existing wind and how that ties into my character. So this is a personal question. I have noticed, and I've also asked many people about this, that we have these antennas coming out of our, our penile gland. Some people don't have them developed, and some people do. I'm aware of them. Do I'm you aware have of any them. knowledge of them? Yes, I am aware of them. Those that have the energy antennas, if you call them that. They are mm -hmm. actually waves of energy that are attached to the pineal gland that that give them extraordinary um, perception about certain things. They are there for certain reasons on certain people. They are not on everyone. They are only for those that are chosen to have them that may need them in the future for their mission. Okay, so yeah, I've been confused about this because I've got them and it, they seem to be tubular and in, also they seem to be able to, um, you're able to, how do I say, like mold them into uh, and, and, and take them in, like stay, they stretchy <laughs> in matter in, in, I don't know, this is in the light body, I think. So yeah, it's, it's mean, difficult to explain. Yes, they, they look tubular, but they're energy and they can expand and they can move. Okay. Uh, they are, they are there for a specific purpose. And when they do expand, it is to bring in more information. Now you may not be aware of all the information. It goes to the subconscious or when it is needed, but you will have that total recall when necessary. All right. Well, thanks for that. I find this so fascinating. The whole mind culture is very much, I feel I feel so connected to it. Yes, it's close you are to very my heart. connected to it yeah. with more than one lifetime. Yes. <laughs> yeah, these things are opening up, I think, for all of us. Thank you so yes. much. It's been a pleasure talking to you. It's been a pleasure. Thank Blessings. you. <laughs> okay. Um, the next person is Angie. I mean, excuse me, April. Sorry. That was Angie. April. Yes. Yes. Do you hear me? Are you there? Yes. April. I cannot hear her. Is she speaking? I don't hear her speaking. Are you speaking, April? Yes. Okay, let me see if ah. I can turn her up. You speak a little louder. Get right in your mic because we're having a hard time hearing you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> She's very soft. Yeah. I wanted to ask about my mission and how it's going in what direction you might now, you're, suggest. You wanted to ask about your mission and how it's going? Yes. All right. I can tell you this. Your mission has started. You have a different kind of a mission than other people, and you realize that. Um, your mission is going well, but uh, keep on it. Keep remembering that it is a different kind of mission because sometimes you can get distracted from this kind of a mission fairly easily. Um, but continue to move forward. It will get stronger and the mission will actually change at some point to actually become a little more powerful in its in, as it um, as it grows, it, it will involve more people. So I will keep an eye on that, but you're doing fine. Thank you. Blessings. Blessings to you. Okay, I believe Stephanie had a question. Stephanie. 
Um, I had already had a chance to ask mine. Thanks so much, Karen. Oh, okay. Sorry for that. Sheer has a question. Sheer. Hello. Greetings again. Greetings again. Um, I want to ask you something. It seems that every year there's some sort of an event that have a greater energy. For example, 2015, we had the blood moon. And then we had the energy cloud. Now we have like that eclipse to 2023. And it seems that there are always stuff like that. What is the most powerful of them all? And what can we expect for the next like 50 years? What is going to be the strongest event? I believe the September 23rd event will be a strong, the most strongest constellational event. It has much meaning and it brings forth good against the evil. It will, if you read Revelations 12, you will see that, uh, well, you will not see unless you study it, that the constellations are aligned according to this part of the Bible. It is unusual that the Bible would be so accurate, but in this case, it is very accurate on that particular alignment. There is something online, I believe, about the September 23rd alignment, and they explain how these things are aligned and why they find it so fascinating. But it is a prophecy, and a prophecy does have great energy, and this will have a great energy. I see. And does it have something to do with the fact that most of the predictions are about uh, first contact somewhere between 20, uh, 2022? It has something to do with that? No, it has something to do with good against evil and what will be happening politically on your planet. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. But right. also spiritually, I shouldn't just say politically, but the spiritual ramifications are very high because the angels will be fighting the demons, if you will. Um, when you say the demons, is the it negative. something? Huh? Angels will be fighting for the earth. Again, something that should not be said against the negative beings that are represented in this prophecy. Okay. Okay, I understand you. Thank you. Yes. There's a question from in the chat. It's from Wendy, and she's saying, uh, what is the capacity? She wants to know, what is the capacity that she is working? Uh, Someone, she says, can someone ask, and I guess that's me, what capacity she is working in and what her role is? Excuse me. Sorry for the confusion. That she must discover because intro, there are many things going on around her. She is in the midst of a lot of different changes right now, and she's being purified to fit into a role. Now it is up to her to finish that purification or let it happen or let it become what it should be. So I cannot tell you the future on that one, but I can tell you that you're in a, in a time of change and purification, a time when things will start to work more in your direction, but you have to let the purification continue. Thank you for that. Thank you. Did anyone else have a question for Tolska? Uh, Don has a question. Don. Hello, Tosca. I would like to ask you a question. Uh, I placed containment around the asteroid belt last May to stabilize the solar system. I wish to know, are the walls of light stable? At this point, they are, yes. But there are, do you realize how many asteroids have fallen since then? Great deal. I know, yes, I know. 
Uh, I, I know. With, but the thing is, they were guided to do so because there was many ships that were hidden inside the asteroid that rained down. And so it gave them a closer look at the planet and gave them a closer uh, sensibility to the Earth. And that's what they wanted. Were so, they, they, yes, what you have done is fine. It is very stable at this time. What the asteroids that did fall were meant to fall because they were put in an energy beam to go the way they did. Okay, thank you very much. Last You're time. welcome. And thank you for your work. Uh, Amanda has a question. Yes. Amanda. Hello, can I be heard? Yes. Great. Um, I would just like to get any kind of clarity as to the nature of my mission, if I have one. I know it's not the same as everyone else here, and sometimes I struggle to find what it is that I do. Everyone has a mission of some sort. You may think, well, I don't, but you may be on a mission to hold light. You may be on a mission to be a healer of just Mother Gaia and the universe and things of this nature. Do not feel that your mission is slight or little because all the missions that are given have great meaning and everyone is needed to keep things in balance and in check. Your mission, I believe, has yet to come to you. There are things within you that are yet to open. You have been working on yourself and your spirituality, but you need to remember that those around you affect you as well. So make your space truly pure. And forgive those that are around you and forgive yourself. I see that you have a bright light and that you have do a lot of good things. Uh, but I cannot tell you what your mission is. But I can give you a hint that it is not, um, not a little mission. And it is not one to be taken for granted. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. There's a uh, question within the room here. Sure. Okay. What is it? Please come. Tosca, Barbara, how you doing? Hello. Hello. Do I have a mission that in the future that will be working with extraterrestrials? You are already working with extraterrestrials. Yes, yes your, your mission is to make them welcome. And you have already done that. You are already working with the, a couple. There will be more. And they will be friends of your friends. But the thing is about your mission is that you will be holding light for them as well. Because there will be a time when there will be some danger for them. And you will be able to save them with the light that you give them. And the opportunity to hold on to that energy that you will give. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, there's a, there's a question uh, in the chat. It's from Omran. And uh, the question is, I feel like I can take down leaders of dark beings on Earth as some kind of assassin. Is that true? I would not call it an assassin. You are not killing the energy. Yeah. You are moving it. You are sending it to some other place. Negative energy is not always destroyed, but it moves on and it's sent to other places. It may look like you are destroying it, but it appears in another dimension, another time space. So therefore, it is equal to what it always was. But sometimes more negative energy is in one place than in another. So you might be looking at sending more away. You do have a great energy for relieving areas and spaces and people of dark energy. Continue. But remember this, there will always be, it will always be there in some place. Perhaps you sent it out of the universe. That would be a good thing. But perhaps you just sent it to the next dimension. 
which is all right as well. The thing is about this, Amran, is that you create the space, the pure space, so that others may work and that you may work in this space. And that is what is necessary at this time. Clearing the space so that work can be done for positivity. Thank you. Also, um, one thing is, uh, Laini says hello to you. Laini, uh, yes. greetings. And the other question is from Jakey Boy. Uh, he said he wonders why he's having trouble channeling currently, um, even though he's new to trans channeling. It's Jake from the Dansville workshop. Ah, Jake, I know who you are. And don't worry about having trouble. Just let it flow. It will happen in its own time. I do not know if you heard the message from Elijah earlier, but there, there are times that are right for these things. Continue to clear yourself, keep yourself cleansed and purified, keep your, uh, forgive all those that are around you, uh, bring in the positivity, it will happen at the right time. Do not say that you are having trouble channeling because uh, negativity will not help that. The word troubled is sort of a negative word. So say that it has just not happened yet, but it will. Be positive, be sure, be certain. Oh, and I see who wants to channel with you. That is very good. They need a voice in this on this world more than that, what they have, and that is good. So do not distrust yourself, but perhaps the time is not quite right for you. Be patient, and we know that you will because it is to be. Thank you. Um, I, I have a question, if I may. This is Karen. Yeah. Um, I had a, a dream. Uh, well, it was a, it was a communication uh, last week on uh, Sunday morning, and as I <laughs> and as I woke up, um, my alarm was going off, and I knew I had to get up. And I was speaking to this being, and she said, "Well, you just stay asleep and continue talking to me." And I said, "Okay, but you have to wake me up in ten minutes." Then, and she agreed to do so. But her name was Ria. Uh, she was Yael. And what she said to me was, um, "We are, we are current. We are currently uh, putting our emissaries in place so that every race will be represented on the planet." And she and she wanted specifically to uh, introduce herself to me, and uh, I believe that I'm going to start channeling her, but I, I don't know for sure. I don't know if you know anything about that. Yes, I do. What, I know what she's talking about. There's many alien-born humans right now. That means that they are coming to the planet and being born as humans. You may say, how do they do this? It is what I did. And you leave your planet and your body behind, and you make uh, certain technological advances to do so. And this is what's happening now. There are many alien-born humans, and they are balancing themselves throughout mankind because they need to hold the energy for the, the world. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Um, the next person is uh, Lila. She has a question. Uh, hi. I'm, I'm, I met an interesting person a few months ago. He's also in the spiritual group in Hukolo, or he was in the past. His name is Guru Dan. And I'm wondering about uh, if it's possible to see for you our past connection and how our energy together uh, works, if we can be a good uh, team doing some healing or whatever we Yes, we should do. I already know about who that is, yes, and I know who you are. There were many past connections with him, and they were all about, he was a priest uh, with you and in some past lives. I'm not sure, uh, I'm not, I, it's hard to do this through another person, so, but I know that he was a priest and you were also a priest with him in the particular life that is coming to me but yes the energy that you both have is very strong his can reach very far at this time in the next life your energy will also reach as far as his 
and you will work together in some way in the next life as well. Thank you. And yeah. then. Uh... Yes. I have a question. Yes, it's April, correct? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I have three cat companions. I can hardly hear you. Can you speak up? I have three cat companions. Ah, yes. And the youngest one has the kindest, sweetest personality. And the other two cats smack her around every time they see her or she gets near them. And I was wondering what those energies are that are in her or in them that are causing that behavior. I see. What color is she? She's gray and black. Gray and black. And what color are the other cats? Black. Black with white. I see. One moment, please. She does have, she doesn't have an unusually strong energy. It's not a negative energy, but it is an energy that is dominant. It is a controlling energy and she can manipulate the other cats if she wishes to. And so therefore, do, do they choose not to be around her? Is that what you said? Yes, and they slap her when they get near her. Well, they do not like it that she can do this. And so they fight against it. But it's not her fault that she has this energy. But it is a strong energy that she has. Always had. I believe that in her last life, she was not a cat, but she something... What? She was a dog. She's a dog? She was, yes. And, oh, yes, correct. They, she has dominant energy. She was not an animal in the last life. That's all I can see right now. Oh, thank you. And I thought she was a dog. Ah, all right. That wanted it's to hard to hear you, so I am not sure what you say. But um, yes, I understand that now. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I don't. Is there any other questions in the chat? Because I don't see any. And it is time for me to leave. All right. I just had one question, if I may, please. Yes. Um, I keep having. Uh, getting a lot of predictions in my dreams. Um, predictions. Yes. Um, and a lot of them are happening. So I'm just trying to figure out what am I supposed to do with the information? I mean, I sent light and prayers, but I don't know what else to do. They're there to protect you. Not everyone will believe your predictions but you, they are true. They are there to keep you safe. Okay. You have an, a mission and the, it is to keep you and your family and those around you safe. And you can see what I am talking about. Yeah. Um, but uh, some of these are more world events. Correct. And they are still for your safety. Okay. All right. Because Thank you. You will be affected by some world events. I have another question. Yes. I wanted to ask what being the cat we were speaking of was before she was this cat. Because she asked me to keep her when she was a kitten. It's so hard for me to hear you. She's saying she wants to know who the being was that was the cat because she was asked when she was a kitten to keep her. Ah, the cat last life uh, was actually, um, let me see, one moment. 
I thought I saw that before. I have to connect with it to see if I can find out. It was a much larger animal, but it was an animal, but it was not a cat. It was a, it looks like a, some kind of serpent. Interesting. Like a large serpent of some sort. That I get reading, but I don't it could be an alligator, die, a serpent. It was a titty. April, are you there? Can you come yeah. back for a moment. Yeah. Can you come back for a moment? Ah, oh, there you are. It look appears to be some kind of reptile in its last life. It has an here? attitude of a reptile. From Does that make earth? sense to you? Yes, from the earth. No, Does I that make understand. sense? I don't understand. Pardon me? I don't understand what you mean. Okay. It just was in the last life. It was not a, a cat. It was some kind of other reptilian animal of some sort. May not have been a mean one or a, anything like that, but it all as I can see is reptilian. It looks like maybe a snake or a a. a oh. It went off the air. It's it, it's gone off air. You're still in the room, but it's yeah. it's gone off air. It kicked me what? out. It kicked me out again. So. All right. What's happening? It's all right. Um, yeah. Something is there. Stopping information from yeah. coming. That people, is had, all right. people had some but trouble I, getting in the room and things as well. I, would, I wanted to explain to April that it didn't seem like a very, not a foul reptilian, but in the past life there was a reptilian presence around that particular. It was a reptilian of some sort. Can I ask a question? Yes. Thank you. Got a vision of it. One moment. Yes. No. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. I got a vision of a pyramid with the eye on No it. one can hear you. I just wanted to know if that's something that we can talk about. She got a vision of a pyramid with an eye on it and wanted to know if we could talk about it. And what did you want to know about it? Like what, what is it like? It is the all-seeing eye that is on the dollar bill. God would be the all-seeing eye. And the pyramid would be a representation of the power. But I do not know what else you want to talk about. Isn't it the Illuminati? Yes, that is the Illuminati. So, yes, that is a symbol of the Illuminati, yes. I do not know why you got the vision, but I can tell you about it a little, but it is all right. I think it's time for me to go. Much love to many of you, to all of you, in fact. I love you dearly, and I wish that Elijah's message would have maintained a full status. Yes, and yours as well. But... We will talk later. Have a wonderful day. Much love. Much love.